Well, today I'm going to talk to you about the CTX 1300. It's a good bike. Um, I think a lot of people are thinking about upgrading from the CTX 700 to the 1300. And that's what I did. I, I chose to upgrade. I wanted a bigger bike that had more power, carried more fuel, because I do a lot of long distance touring and I the 700 just wasn't cutting it for me. I, I put the bags on it, a good windshield, a good seat. And I think one of the biggest things that I didn't like about the 700 is that highway speed, when you had your bags full, it would not do very good on gas. I, I would say it would probably do 40, 45 miles to the gallon. That was a dual clutch, non-fairing model. And I just wasn't happy with it. I, I, it worked for a while. It did work and the bike can do it. But after a while, I just needed something with a bigger engine, bigger fuel capacity, longer range. And I was looking at a bunch of different bikes and I just happened to walk into the Honda dealer, my local Honda dealer, and they had this bike sitting on the showroom floor. It wasn't even put away in the rows. It was sitting like right in the middle of the floor. And it just happened to be the bike I was looking for. Um, and it was just dirt cheap. I, they said a guy had bought it, rode it 300 miles. He bought a brand new, rode it 300 miles, brought it back and said that he couldn't ride it. He thought because of the foot peg position of your knees being bent at a 90 degree angle that he would be able to ride this bike with a bad knee and it, it turned out that he couldn't. So it was a killer deal. I had to buy it. It, it was sitting there with 300 miles on it with the tall windshield, the center stand, and the luggage rack or whatever Honda calls it. The little rack that goes behind the passenger seat already installed for $69.95 not including tax title license of course it came out to uh, about $7,500 but still it, it was a deal I couldn't pass up and I can after owning this bike I can see why it flopped and the, that Honda basically abandoned this motorcycle at least here in the United States I definitely would not want to pay the full $16,000 for it uh, I would feel a little ripped off um, it just it doesn't have the options that it should for a $16,000 bike you know especially that $16,000 with that little tiny windshield on it it only sticks up maybe an inch or two, which is totally useless. And it doesn't come back, come with, it doesn't come with the center stand, which it should come with that. It should come with the optional tall windshield, optional center stand, you know, like if you want it or not, it, they should put that on for free. It should come with that. This bike new should come with a tall windshield and a center stand, at least. Especially for the price they were asking for a brand new one. And this is just the uh, standard model. This is not a deluxe model. The deluxe had anti-lock brakes, traction control, uh, automatic canceling turn signals, and a radio, which didn't even have an FM radio. It was just a Bluetooth receiver for your phone. I think it could do one other thing, but I can't think of it right now. Oh, you could put a USB drive in a little socket and play music off a of USB. That's what it was. But still, you know, that was $1,500 more for the deluxe model, and that's really all you got. It's a uh, steel frame. It should have had an aluminum frame. And the spec sheet, I think, is 
what turned most people off is why they didn't buy this bike because it looks bad on paper it's a 725 pound bike with uh 80 horsepower and 80 foot pounds of torque that's it and on paper that just doesn't look right compared to other bikes out there in that price range you know it's just there's better options out there So, back to what I was saying. Uh, right, there's better options out there than this bike. Um, I feel really bad for the people who paid full price for this motorcycle when it first came out. Because they were left abandoned by Honda. Honda basically cut ties with them. They cut ties with the motorcycle. And they just abandoned those people. And it, it's a sad deal. I don't like it when manufacturers do that. But Honda has a way of doing that more often than other manufacturers do. The bike seems like they just had the engines laying around. They had a warehouse full of engines from the ST1300. And they just wanted to use them where they had an engine plant already tooled up to produce engines and it didn't cost them very much and they just wanted to put this engine in something so they come up with this steel frame um, very antiquated suspension and speaking of the suspension too it, it has a bit of an issue in the front end now the small bumps and the medium bumps, it absorbs them really nice. Uh, you really can't feel them. So for most roads that are decent, it you can't tell. But if you hit a large bump, it sends a shock through the handlebars and makes the handlebars shudder in a way that tries to throw your hand off of them. I've had it happen to me a few times and it I've gotten used to it, but you hit a big bump, your handlebars shudder, then the throttle is very sensitive. It's uh, it's something you gotta get used to and be very smooth with this throttle. Otherwise you'll get that jerking motion, you'll get the slop in the gears through the drivetrain, start jerking back and forth. So you hit a bump, the handlebars shake, you jerk the throttle a little bit because you're not used to that. Then you get the slop in the gears, then the motorcycle starts to jerk back and forth. Then when the motorcycle jerks, you jerk the throttle back and forth even more. And it it's very, it's a strange thing to have to get used to. I've never had to deal with anything like that on any other motorcycle. But again, now I've ridden this bike for 23,000 miles and I'm used to it. it. It doesn't bother me anymore. I'm used to the weight. Uh, it has plenty of power. The power curve and the torque curve are very boring, I guess. It, it's, uh, it's 80 horsepower and 80 foot-pounds of torque over most of the RPM range. So it gets up to 80 horsepower and torque, you know, just uh, probably at probably around 3,000 RPM, and it just stays there all the way to uh, like I would have to say like five and a half or 6,000 RPM. Then your power, you start to lose power after that. So all your power is in the middle of the tachometer, which is a really good idea for a touring motorcycle. I like it. It's still just a five-speed transmission. 
Fike the ST was. And for a touring motorcycle, it's fine. You really don't need a six-speed. A lot of people want a six-speed. You don't really need a six-speed. It's I found six speeds just tend to be too much shifting. You're always shifting gears. With this bike, it has enough power in the lower RPM range where you can just kind of get it up into fifth gear going like 30, 35 miles an hour, and then that's it. You don't have to shift anymore. And I like that, especially when you're going through parks, you're taking it easy, it's nice not to have to shift up and down every, around like every curve in the road. You know, that, that gets a gets annoying and you know, especially you gotta pull that clutch and every time you shift gears, you might shift 100 gears through a park down one road. So this one you just pick a gear and leave it. Uh, it's, it's very nice in that sense. They do not make this bike in a dual clutch transmission and they never will, unfortunately. I know a lot of people on 700s, they want a bigger bike, but they want the automatic. And uh, Honda is making more of their motorcycles with the dual clutch transmission. And it's a good idea. I like the dual clutch transmission on my 700. It worked flawlessly. I never had an issue with it. I put I think there's 25,000 miles on that bike. Now it's the bike that my wife learned on and she got her motorcycle license. Now that's her bike and she really loves it. It's a great bike for her. I think Honda puts the dual clutch on the new Goldwing and the Africa Twin. Those are the only bikes I can think of. There might be more. I just can't think of them right now. But hopefully they continue the trend and hopefully people buy into it because it is great technology and it works really good. I don't understand why people wouldn't want it. Uh, you know, when I talk to people about it, I always say, oh yeah, it's an automatic motorcycle. They say, what? Why wouldn't you want to shift gears? I have to shift gears. I've always shifted gears. It's like, well, do you do you drive an automatic car? And almost everybody today drives an automatic car. Uh, and I was, well, yeah, I got an automatic car. I was like, well, what's wrong with an automatic motorcycle? It's, it's <laughs> you know, it's the same deal. It's great technology. It works really good. I loved it. I wish that they would have made the 1300 with a dual clutch, but when you understand that this engine came from a previous motorcycle and they, they're they not going to update this, uh, I don't know if I would say antiquated, but it's an old designed engine and they're just, they're not going to take the dime to update it. I think there's a cop up here. Cops always sit up here. Anyway, they're not going to update the old technology. They're, they're just going to run it as how their factory is set up. But the 1300, this is a good engine. It's a solid engine. Uh, I trust this powertrain to take me anywhere I want to go. I don't even worry about it ever wearing out. I don't think I can ever wear it out. I always keep really good oil in it. Change oil once a year, maybe twice if I do a lot of riding, but usually just once a year. Another thing that's strange about this motorcycle is the mirrors. The mirrors are in a very strange position where when I when I look at them, when I get them adjusted so I can see behind me, you know, the, the top maybe a quarter to a third of the mirror, all I can see is my hand. You know, it just reflects right back on my hand that's resting on the handlebar. 
It's just, it doesn't seem to work the best. I mean, I can see just fine, but it seems like a very, I don't know, just a poor design, poor placement of the mirror. But if you can get over the fact that you gotta look at the front of your hand all the time, then where they where they put them, it actually blocks a lot of the wind off your hand. So it's it's nice in a way that it keeps the wind off of you. But it would be nicer if you could actually see, well, see better. I can see just fine, really. Uh, again, I'm used to it. I have them adjusted. It took me a while to get them set where I like them. I also put the top box on it, the trunk, and that was kind of a strange experience purchasing that. Because if you look up the trunk, I think it's like $350 from Honda. You know, the same color, color match and everything, and I needed a red one. I thought, oh, well, you know, that's not bad. You know, that's actually pretty competitive. But I soon found out that that was just for the box. And you needed the adapter plate. You needed the rack. You had to buy the lock and the tumblers were two separate things. And then it came out to like, uh, I think it was like five or $600 for that box. So it's like they kind of tricked you, you know. They should just include everything. If you're buying the box, why wouldn't you want the rest of the hardware to mount it? I don't know. doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But it was more of like a, a bait and switch with that box. Like a lot of their accessories, Honda accessories are just ridiculous. If you're considering buying one of these, it is a good motorcycle. You just have to get over the fact that it has some, ah, it just doesn't have the fit and finish that Honda is known for. I feel like they cut a lot of corners. They, they really tried to make it cheap. They, they made this bike with a large profit margin in mind. They thought that they were going to make a lot of money with this. You know, in the bagger style motorcycle segment, and it just did not go over well with anybody. Uh, 2014 is the only year that you can buy this in the United States, as far as I know. 
Uh, they do still make this motorcycle and they sell them in other countries. So uh, it shouldn't be any problem getting parts for it or any maintenance related items. The rear tire on this bike is a strange size. They put a 250 17 rear tire on it, which it looks kind of cool from the back of the motorcycle. Just looking at it, you'd say, wow, that, that's, that's a nice big fat tire on there. It, it looks cool. But it's expensive and it wears out quickly. Ah. Uh, I wish they wouldn't have done that. I wish they would have just put a common size tire on it because when you're on the road riding long distance, you want a tire that the dealerships carry. So if you need to get a tire replaced, it's not a big issue. But this tire, it could turn into a problem. If you're out there, you get a flat tire, and none of your none of the dealerships in that area have that tire. So be aware of that. That it chews them off, and they're expensive. The front suspension is okay. I mean, it rides nice. It's a little on the firm side. And I think that's what makes the handlebars. It's a bit on the firm side. I think that's what makes the handlebars shake over bumps. And I think the reason they set the suspension on the front kind of stiff is because if you grab a handful of brake and you have to stop, the whole bike seems to lurch forward. I mean, it, it does like a nose dive. And it's, if the suspension were any softer, it would be pretty, it wouldn't be a good experience. So I, I kind of get it why they did that. I wish they would have come up with something better. But again, this seems like a bike that they were just more interested in profit margin than actually making a modern motorcycle. And that's too bad. You know, the, the name of these bikes is CTX, which is supposed to stand for Comfort, Technology, and Experience. Whatever experience is supposed to mean. Comfort? Eh, okay. It, it is... It's a relatively comfortable bike if you like this seating position if you like sitting with your back straight up and your knees bent at a four if you like sitting straight up and having your knees bent at a 90 degree angle kind of like you would sit in your dining room chair then it's great and there's a lot of people like that I like it I like the seating position some people don't um, some people like to be hunched over a little bit forward or leaned forward um, otherwise it causes them back problems or whatever they just they prefer to lean over the fuel tank a little bit this bike doesn't offer that at all uh, you, you're basically leaning back or sitting straight up. The handlebars are in a good spot. I don't feel too stretched out. They're far enough away. Um, the handlebars are wide. And they give you a lot of leverage when you're trying to steer the motorcycle. That's nice. You don't have to... It takes very little force because that big wide tire on the back, it, if they had to do that because that big wide tire on the back, it, you want as much leverage as you can have to just keep the comfort level in an appropriate area.
The placement of the foot pegs is good. I have no problems with that. I find them very comfortable. The controls are in a very natural position. Uh, everything seems very natural when I ride this bike. So comfort, I'll, I'll give it that. It, it's pretty good. I did change out the seat. I put a Corbin seat on it because I ride long distance. And I've had Corbin seats in the past and I really liked them. I can sit on this seat all day long, no problem. Now the technology part, that's the part that I struggle to understand because <laughs> there is no technology here. Let's have LED lights. It has all LED lights, which is kind of neat. So th there's one thing, and I think that's about it. Uh, it has LED lights. Everything else is kind of an antiquated design. Um, it's really no frills. There's no radio on this one, no, like I said, no cruise control. Uh, no, nothing really. Uh, the fairing is okay. Just give everyone a quick walk around of the bike. It is a nice bike, and if, uh, if you want a bigger bike, but the gold wing is just too big for you, or you don't feel comfortable on a bike that size, but you want something big enough that can go down the highway real nice. This is a good bike. Uh, on paper, like I said, it doesn't look good on paper. Uh, you don't feel the weight. Once this thing is rolling, you don't feel it as a heavy bike. It feels like a very well-balanced bike. The weight is very low. It handles very nice. You can see it's like they put a uh, glitter in the paint. It, it looks very nice in the sunlight. It's a beautiful bike. It's a beautiful paint job. Again, I, I rarely wash it, so it still has bugs and dirt and everything on it from last year. I I just don't believe in washing my bikes. Just let them, let them be dirty. That doesn't bother me. Especially when you ride a bike that's made out of plastic. You don't want to wash them too much. Rubbing on that plastic will destroy it. As you can see, even slow maneuvers like this, it, it handles very nice. It doesn't feel like a big heavy bike when you ride it. It does not feel like a 725 pound motorcycle. So if you can find one of these bikes for the right price, it's worth it. It's worth it for like uh, around the $7,000 mark, low miles, uh, pristine. It's got to be in really nice condition. Uh, they, they just don't have a lot of value. So don't spend a lot of money on it because you're never going to get that money back. And it, it really is a overall a good bike. I plan on riding this bike on many more cross country trips for many years to come. <clears throat> I like it.
so I would recommend the bike if this is if you like this seating position and you like the styling of it and you can find one for a good price go for it now fuel economy isn't that great um, I think usually on my trips I maybe average 42 or 43 miles to the gallon that that's about all all I can do um, going at like 45 miles an hour here um, it's telling me I'm doing 55 but you know how often are you just cruising down a country road like this going 45 miles an hour usually you're going 60 70 75 miles an hour and going at those speeds especially going down the freeway it'll do maybe 40 miles to the gallon but it does have a five gallon tank so even at 40 miles to the gallon you still have a 200 mile range which is okay that, that's about uh what most bikes do is about 200 miles to the tank so it's not incredible it's not too bad it's kind of it's right in the middle I've never on my trips worried about running out of gas uh, there were a few times I got nervous but it wasn't <clears throat> it wasn't the motorcycles fault it was because there was a gas station there and I drove past it and then I got a little nervous thinking ooh maybe I should have stopped at that one um, I've never run out of gas though. Uh, when the gauge says empty, there's still a lot of gas in the tank. Like most modern cars today, they've set this fuel gauge to scare you. Which is a good idea, I like that. I know I said uh, when I got this bike it came with a tall Honda windshield and I changed that out I didn't like that windshield it actually blocked too much air on warm days days when I'm talking it's like 90 95 degrees and you're rolling through Nebraska Wyoming or Montana it, you couldn't get enough air on your body to keep you cool enough so I went with this Madstad windshield it's adjustable for height and angle I also added this little spoiler to the top I know it doesn't look like much but that spoiler helps a lot it's just enough to deflect the wind around your helmet and I can set that at different angles and different heights right now it's all the way at its lowest setting probably should have it set up a little higher because it is I don't know maybe 40 degrees today it's January 5th in southeast Wisconsin and so far I've not seen any other motorcycles on the road so no need to worry about waving it's nice getting a bike like this for a really low price for less than half price of MSRP so it's a bike you can take anywhere and because it got it cheap you don't really have to worry about it too much you don't have to worry about it in the in the parking lot at motel rooms you don't have to worry too much about you know if it falls over just pick it back up and go you don't have to worry if you gotta ride it through some car on the road some road construction you know just don't worry about it just have fun enjoy the ride don't worry about the bike you're not going to wear it out
I did choose to put some aftermarket fog lights on this because at night the lights that the bike comes with have a very abrupt end to the light pattern at the top of the beam so when you lean the bike around a corner there's no light shining around the corner it's just completely dark uh, that that was kind of an issue because that's when you really need to see you know if there's anything in the road or there's a pothole or a big bump or dead animal or whatever you couldn't see it so I put I put these aftermarket fog lights on made by Clearwater Lights these are a set of Darla's and they work really nice they are plenty bright but they're not cheap they come with this nice little dial where you can adjust the brightness of them so as I turn them up they get brighter and they use more power so when I turn it down it uses it draws less power from the charging system of the bike during the day I always run them all the way at the lowest setting because I don't want to blind people they are obnoxiously bright when they're on high beam and also if I press the high beam switch then they automatically go full 100% without me having to touch this dial which that's a nice feature so when I when there's traffic coming I can just hit this switch and put the main lights down to dim and the fog lights automatically go to dim I don't have to mess with this dial it's it's wired into this switch 